Liquid Lunch Live is brought to you by Question Tequila. Hey, welcome back. Coming to you live, as always, uh, you're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV, seen every day, noon to one, right here on Newsmax. And today we're at the Newsmax headquarters studio, which is a big upgrade for us. And we got all the suits in here. They're watching us. They keep walking by, seeing if me and Frankie are screwing anything up. But uh, we do have the question. We're at the question tequila studios. And what we do every day on Liquid Lunch is we demonstrate our bipartisanship by having on a Democrat and a Republican throwing out some ideas. We hash them out no matter what. We hear all voices. At the end, we shake hands and we part friends. I call this mix it up because usually I mix myself up a little drink right here. Uh, Rob Hornack, uh, Rob Taub returned to the show. Good to be here, John. Um, Rob is uh, a Newsmax contributor. He's a humorist, a uh, bright, intelligent, thoughtful guy who has a uh, Democratic-leaning philosophy. And uh, Rob Hornack is a veteran Republican strategist. And uh, you guys, this whole thing with Joe Biden, he's always trying to do the moonwalk out of these situations. I want you to take a look at this clip. I'm sure you've seen it. And I want your, both your thoughts. You don't have to agree. You don't have to like the people in terms of their views. But you just simply make the case and you beat them. You beat them without changing the system. How does it feel that your Democratic rivals are implicitly saying you have issues talking about race? They know better. Are you going to right, apologize? Thanks, guys. Like Corey apologize for, for what? Cory Booker's called for it. Cory should, should apologize. He knows better. <laughs> uh, Rob Taub, what do you think about Joe's tap dance here? I don't think it was a tap dance. I, I love Joe Biden. I think he's doing a great job. He's not apologizing for anything. This is how our Constitution works. This is how the founding fathers developed our country. You're going to have checks. You're going to have balances. You're going to have bipartisanship. You're going to have partisanship. And politicians have to work together. You might not like somebody. You might disagree with somebody. You and I disagree, but we're sitting here civilly. And 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 so that's all he was saying. That's what he's going to do. He hung What's out with, with that? segregationists. Uh, should he apologize? Apologize. Of course he should. But look, the reality is you can disagree on issues, but the history of the Democratic Party is one that's based in racism and segregation. That's, that's right. what their politicians have been standing for for over 150 years. And it's something that they're trying to break from now. It's not going to be an easy one to do, but they're doing this tap dance. Biden, who's been in the, in the politics for 40 years now, uh, has strong connection to a lot of these historical figures that are traditionally racist. And, of course, Booker is trying to, you know, create a new model, a new Democratic Party. That, and they're trying to whitewash the old, for lack, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Joe says, like, this Democratic mafia, Party. Joe oh. says this mafia voice, they know better. Let's see what Cory Booker said. Take a look at this. I know that segregation is like the two people here are talking about through their laws and their language. Uh, deeply wounded this nation and the present day manifestations of their work can still be seen in black and brown communities like the one I go home to. <laughs> Rob Tell. We got a collapsing infrastructure. Let's stop worrying about what happened 100 years ago right now. It's over and done with. We're not going to change it. I went to the James Monroe Elementary School. Do you know that they want to change the name of every James Monroe school now in this country because they just realized that he owned slaves? I mean, wh why don't we fix our roads instead of it's, we could rename it the Marilyn Monroe High School, okay? But w w or, or elementary school. It's ludicrous. What do you, Enough already, what do you Corey think, Booker. Yeah, I'll, I'll give Booker a little bit of credit because if you can look at any American city Democratic run American city and see institutional racism that's been there for decades upon decades. You've got people uh, in the black communities, they have the worst jobs, the worst housing, uh, the, the worst schools. I mean, this is a problem that needs to be overcome. And you can talk about it in terms of reparations or however you want to couch it, but ultimately you've got to come up with solutions for these problems. It will only lift all the boats in this country. So, uh, Cory Booker keeping himself well in the news, even though he's at one percent in the presidential polls um the uh they're also he came out with some comments about uh compensating descendants of slaves and like you just said this stuff was like 100 
well, years ago. Well, he's not ago. just talking about economic reparations, but my point is, I don't think Cory Booker is sincere. I think he's looking to grandstand, to garner attention, and to galvanize a black vote. If he wants to do that, there are better ways to do it than calling Joe Biden a racist, because the Democratic Party needs unification now, and Joe Biden is the front runner. Bernie Sanders, Cory Booker, or Elizabeth Warren are not going to beat Donald Trump. It's not happening, and they better realize that and stand behind Joe Biden. And you think you think Biden can beat Trump? Absolutely. Rob? I, I'm shocked at what I'm hearing. Are you actually, Rob, telling me that you believe that yes. there's politics and politics? Yes. That Cory Booker, Mr. Uh, I am Spartacus, is grandstanding? Yes, I, I don't believe my ears. Grandstanding. <laughs> <laughs> I agree 100%. He's totally I, grandstanding. I, I, I tell the truth. I can yeah. handle the truth. I hope you guys can, too. <laughs> so this guy, uh, Salzberger, from the New York Times, which to me keeps degrading itself. This guy, the, for the publisher of the paper of record? I'd have a, I don't think it's the paper of record anymore, and that's for why who? I call him this guy. Um, um, writes an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, and you know he's talking about Trump's attacks on the press as being stupid. Have you ever seen a press attack every single minute thing of a president like this in history? Have you ever seen this? Yes, before? Fox News used to pick on on Obama all the time. Look, you, can we speak Italian here, John? Yeah, let's. You speak know Italian. what I think? Let's Trump go. is behaving like a shadrul. He's a okay? yadrul. Uh, it's, he's a mamaluke. What's going on here? He reads the New York Times every day. He met with Salzberger in his office last week. He doesn't tell people that. He reveres the New York Times, and he wants to. He wants them to bow at his feet, and that's not going to happen. Is the gray lady dying? Oh, it's dead. I mean, nobody cares what they have to say anymore. Look, the reality is uh, Trump's doing the right thing. He is calling these guys out for their partisan overtly partisan editorializing in their newspapers, news pages. Uh, when's it going to end? I mean, they are on a mission to destroy this president. Uh, if they did half of uh, what you said that they did to, 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 to Barack Obama, people would be apoplectic over it. Rob, you have a final thought on this? I just, I see the New York Times as doing great reportage. Uh, Michael Schmidt, Maggie Haberman, they report the truth. They often just write down what Trump says. That buries him more than anything else. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. I always say, um, as part of the team that helps write some of the thoughts for the show, you don't need a writer with Trump. Like, he just writes this stuff himself. But uh, I think Maggie Haberman, Haberman from time to time does some pretty seriously good reporting. I'll, go. I'll, I'll give you that, Rob. And okay. uh, that's why these segments are about purple people, because all voices are heard. Take a quick break. You stay right there. Watch these commercials. We're coming back right after this. We're going to mix it up some more.